Episode 160 is Icar. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Icarus, the story, the myth, the legend, the Greek legend of Icarus and Daedalus. So there's a bit of a background to this story. I think Daedalus was an inventor. He seemed to have been very driven by his ego, that he pushed the boundaries a bit too far. And he got Icarus and himself in the situation where they were there's two sides to the story. There's two different or two different types of stories. They were either trapped in a tower, banished away into a tower, or they were actually kept inside a labyrinth that Daedalus had created because he helped a woman get impregnated by a bull, which created a minotaur. I don't know what the king's name was. He wasn't happy. That's why Daedalus created the labyrinth. And anyway. Daedalus and Icarus ended up either being banished and put into the labyrinth or they were sent to a tower. While they were there, Daedalus noticed that the birds overhead, they held a solution. They could fly. So he took inspiration from the birds and he created these wings made of bird feathers. His advice then to Icarus was to not fly too close to the sun because the wings would melt, the wax would melt in the wings and he would fall to his death. The other piece of advice was to not fly too close to the water because the wings would absorb the moisture from the water and it would weigh the wings down and again, he would die. So those were the two pieces of advice he was given. Icarus being Icarus, youth, he didn't obey his father and he flew too close to the sun and he died. A very basic lesson there is to listen to your elders that they have more life experience, more knowledge that the youth listen to our elders. That's a lesson that's there, an important lesson that's there. There's other lessons there. That's why I want to talk about it today uh, as it relates to mental health, art, creativity, and society, dealing with people. Seth Godin actually has a very good book. I'm starting to read it now about Icarus deception. He ties it to art and society. And the way he looks at the Icarus story it's actually interesting because when I thought of Icarus and I hadn't briefly looked into the story before doing this podcast, I just thought of the flying too close to the sun part. I never really thought about the flying too close to the water part because that isn't very accentuated in the story in my mind. It was more about not flying too high in life. And in the Icarus deception, Seth Godin explores the fact that flying too close to the water is just as bad as flying too close to the sun. You'll die both ways. And he ties it to being human, creating work that matters, creating art, living in an industrial age, which doesn't allow us to be human. It's a systemized process, which is focused on efficiency and profit. And there's a place for that in the world, but also we're in a different era. We're not in the industrial revolution anymore. And what's stopping us is that we don't realize that the industrialized way of life has slowly started to fall apart. The value in it has slowly started to disintegrate. It's kind of like even in computing, Moore's law, that's that the computing power doubles. I think it's computing power doubles every year or every 18 months. That will be interesting even moving forward, whether that will keep continuing on that trajectory. It's the same type of principle with the industrial revolution. Like there's, there's only so much you can optimize also without sacrificing your human morals. Even in that book, The Icarus Deception, he talked a little bit about it was to do with somebody invented something to eat and it was basically created from the remnants left over when you kill a cow. It was put into this product to make it more efficient. And it, talked a little bit about like sometimes when it comes to the story we tell ourselves efficiency doesn't that little bit of efficiency isn't worth compromising over so that's the type of stuff you're thinking about there and so Seth Godin in that book he explores the flying too close to the water which kills the artist kills the human being because the other thing with the industrial revolution is kept going by a system and the system is created in such a way where It doesn't matter whether people don't care about what they're creating because the system takes that into account. The system's optimized for that. So that's how you'll go out into the world today and you'll see so many people who hate their jobs, don't want to be there, yet things carry on. 
and products improve nevertheless because the system keeps going so then this book and what i want to explore more so myself today how do you find that middle ground actually the book doesn't talk so much about that you focused a, a bit more on the flying too close to the water which is giving up your artistry giving up your individuality giving up your your own unique voice in the service of conformity conformity to fit in with a system and what tends to happen is that instead of the pain of artistry which isn't really optional either it is difficult to put stuff out there that matters to you and to show up that's a, a difficult thing to do but just as difficult is the numbing sensation of feeling like a cog in a machine so you're caught between a, a rock and a hard place and i i know i prefer uh, pursuing the part of, part of artistry and choosing that pain more so than the, the numbing sensation of not being alive so what i want to talk about on this podcast is the balance i want to talk first about when it comes to mental health how i see this icarus story in terms of a metaphor for mania and depression so the flying too close to the sun part as a creative that would be when you're getting absorbed in manic feelings so i've experienced mania before in the past and what i how i would describe it is that there are feelings in there that make you feel alive perhaps for the first time to really feel a connection to like oneness like there's an esoteric feeling there and there's also a feeling of being on top of the world and really truly feeling alive but the other part of that mania which makes it dangerous is that there's also a sense that you don't have any control in this that there's energy coming through you flowing through you that you don't know when it's going to stop you don't know how it's going to alter your actions and behaviors and your thought process so it feels completely outside your control and you feel powerless even though you feel alive at the same time so that's when you get a bit too close to the sun when you're wrapped up in that whole manic world and it's hard to pull back from then that's the the wax melting and yeah falling to your dead the other side of it is the depression part which actually when the wax melts from that mania when that thing that energy is flown through you it's passed that is when the mac wax melts and you fall into the sea of depression you fall into that black hole the feelings are gone and now you're just left with empty space and a sense of shame and a sense of where did those feelings go where did they come from and that would be the water part there that you actually fall into the other side of this is that you could just stay in the water and never even try and go anywhere near the sun and that for me on a mental health feeling level that would feel like a numbness it would feel like conformity it would feel like i've got no voice i'm not willing to be any way creative i am so afraid of what everybody else thinks i'm so afraid of group think that i'll never put in the time and energy to think true things for myself to make my own decisions in life that's what flying too close to the water does for you so that's the other end of the spectrum and that isn't healthy either it might feel like you're avoiding these elevated emotions and the danger that can go with them sometimes but you're living a life where it's like that tarot quote it's like living a life of quiet desperation that's what the other end of the spectrum is so what you want to do well, what i found from my life i want to find a middle ground in between so i don't want to fly so because my the wax is welted melted in my wings and i've experienced that fall into depression from mania i know what that feels like so when i'm moving towards that i'll have a sense that no i want to pull back down a bit more now and go more back into center because i know what that feels like i have a bit more awareness around that so that's the that's actually a positive to your wings melting and flying too close to the sun it's a painful process to go through but once you've gone through it you have a good idea of where that line is for the next time so instead of flying 
being trapped in the water, you have a better sense of where is the in-between here. And in that book, The Icarus Deception, Seth Godin talked about how do you trap a fox? And it was basically, you just keep building around them. Just one, like the fox is too clever for, him to, for you to put him in the box straight away. But if you lead him to the bait and you just build one wall the first time, build another wall the second time, build another wall the third time until he's boxed in. That's how you trap a fox. And the way Set was relating that was to human beings. How did we get trapped into this industrial age promise? And the bait would have been things like more security, decent job, decent wage. It'd be all these kind of things. This, this, these things that are important, but it, there's also a sense of false security there also at the same time. When you're living in the real world, there is no such thing as solid 100% security. There's only improvements you can make, better decisions you can make as you go along as you get more feedback. But for the balance part of thing, you can use that, that metaphor in a positive sense that if you have gone to the edge, your, your, the wax is melted, you fall into debt, talking here on an emotional level, you can slowly build yourself back up again because you have a feel for where you at least know where the edge on the upper end is, but you can slowly build yourself back again. So you're stuck in the water, but you're going to like gradually level by level build yourself up again. So you're not just going to next time fly out into the air and go straight to the sun. The next time you do it, you'll fly closer to the water. But as you move along, you'll slightly move up level by level. So you're moving towards the sun, but you're not making any massive rash risks on it either in terms of your mental health. So that's how I see it with mental health. When it comes to just creativity in general and writing, podcasting, even learning a technical skill like programming, so it's not taking off more than you can chew, taking on more than you can chew to start with. And I find the balance is actually quite a peaceful place. So one of the biggest fears I've had with a podcast and with, with showing up, being myself, putting voice to how I really think and feel about things. One of the biggest fears I had was that i will come into conflict a lot of the times with a lot of people. And what's helped me is to realize that the middle ground never feels triggering to me. That's not to say that I'm always in the middle ground, but I got that sense of feeling triggered. And I know that that's never the middle ground for me. Like creativity and things that I'm proud of never come along with a sense of being triggered and reactive to somebody else or to their ideology, how they think about things, even noticing hidden ideologies within myself. So that's helped me to to realize that as a creative person, that the middle ground feels more on an even keel. There's more of a balanced perspective there. And there's a sense of progress. So when you're flying in a straight line in the battle, in the balance in the middle, you're you're also you've also got this sense of progress because you're moving forward through time rather than going up and down and higgledy piggledy all over the place, not having a sense of bearing. And then with the programming, with just with a technical skill, just that sense of balance that that even keel will help you to not take on too much and not to have expectations of yourself that are unrealistic. So I suppose that's another big thing with the mental health as a creative person. When you've got, so when you can find a balance between realistic expectations and realistic expectations here would be about the things you control, what's actually in your power, what's not in your power. And Seth Godin does a great job also at, at the, expectations, challenging your expectations. He talks about in terms of the masses, mass markets. This is a trap that I'd fallen into quite early on when I started doing the podcast. I started writing. It was just this idea that what I had to create was going to appeal to the masses and that my audience had to grow 
almost exponentially. And it's been a process over the years of, of breaking through that illusion. I, I wouldn't have a sense of that being an illusion only for working on this for so long now. And said, talked about that, that you want to connect with the weird edge cases. So weird is a word that I've grappled with for years and that I've gradually, slowly been coming to terms with through creativity. This word, weird. When I really think about it, weird, weird is almost a synonym for being an individual, an individual voice, because usually the term weird will be put on you by groupthink, people who aren't really being themselves, who aren't showing up. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever met somebody who was showing up in a genuine way in their life that called me weird. And if they did call me weird, it was coming from a good place. They saw it as a positive rather than negative. So that's something that I've been a long time, I guess, grappling with. And it's been more on an emotional level and more so than anything. But when you start embracing that, you get a better expectation of what you're creating. So you, you're, you're finding it more, you're focusing more on who is this for, who is it not for, getting more clear in the idea that this isn't for the masses. You kind of move beyond that because when you try and target the masses, you have to water yourself down. You have to try and please a lot of different people. And it doesn't work effectively without you sacrificing yourself in some way, in some important way. So then I suppose that leads into just the importance of patience and work ethic and focusing in genuinely on the process. That's what I guess I'm learning over time through art is that a genuine focus on the value of the process and what that looks like in real life. You, you pay more attention to how your work and who you're connecting with is impacting your felt experience of life and just the quality of thoughts going through your head on a day-to-day -day basis, what you're actually focusing in on. The thing is what you're thinking, you have no control over the thoughts that are coming to your head all the time. But you, what you do have a control over though is what you focus on, what you tend to take seriously. And even with the negatives, so what I mentioned there about grappling with this this feeling of being weird and not wanting to feel weird. What I'm actually doing at the moment, it came from a conversation with somebody. I'm writing an affirmation and the affirmation goes along the lines of, I'm more committed to being myself than making other people comfortable, feel comfortable. And I have lived with the exact opposite dynamic for a long period of my life unconsciously. It was more important to me that people didn't feel I was weird and they were comfortable around me than it was to actually be myself. And so with that affirmation, it's not like you're intentionally making people uncomfortable, but you value you being you more, more so than other people being comfortable. And what tends to happen over time, how this plays out, is that the people who aren't comfortable with you being you just won't be around you so much. And the people who are comfortable with you being you will gravitate more towards you. So it's a filtering process really that that affirmation is doing and that way of living is doing, even though it feels uncomfortable at the beginning and it feels uncomfortable because it's, it's just, you're breaking a pattern, you're changing a pattern intentionally. So discomfort, oftentimes intentional discomfort is a good thing because growth comes from discomfort, change comes from discomfort. And uh, this is one thing I wanted to share there at the end of it. But that's the story of Icarus and Daedalus and how I kind of make sense of it in terms of mental health, creativity, and art. Just wanted to share share that today. And also to share the knowledge that that it is difficult to be human, to, to create art, to create something that has meaning, to target a small audience, a small viable audience. The thing is with what I found challenging with the small audience is that it's a very long-term game you're playing. And how I've coped with it is that 
I have given up on this idea that this is going to be a full-time thing for me. I'd love to be in a place where my podcast and my writing, that's my life, that that's what I generated enough income to sustain myself. But I've given up on that being the end goal because I don't know if and when that would happen. But what I focus more on is the actual process. Like I said, it's how is this work impacting my felt experience of life, who I'm connecting with in the present moment. So that, that focus is really important. And, uh, and that's, that's why the targeting the masses was more appealing to me at the beginning, because I felt that if you can get traction on a big wide range of, of an audience, then you'd figure out the monetization part and then this would become my life. But it didn't really turn out like that. And I have come to the conclusion because through reading, through listening to other people, I respect Seth Godin there. I've had him on the podcast. I respect the guy because just the stuff he puts out there is, is uh, very insightful, really makes you think. And see what I'm talking to him, there's a genuine sense of he's in it for the art. And even he's reading his book, it just makes artistry seem so normal. And it puts words to how I felt about artistry also. So it helps, it helps just kind of form, reinforce what I kind of feel about art. Art not being somebody who is a painter, but somebody who is in it for the connection, the self-expression. Yeah, the connection to self-expression. And th that way it can take many forms. It's open to many different people. It's not some kind of rare godlike quality but it does require bravery and courage and the ability to show up. So I'd recommend reading that book, The Icarus Deception. And just having a think about this stuff. Uh, yeah, enjoy today's podcast, relating it to that story. It made me think a little bit more about what I experienced for, with mania and, and depression uh, in the early part of my 20s. Just put some words to that because these things can be painful going through them, but they're, they're not a bad thing if you can come out the other side because you've got that bearing it will take time to build yourself up again but you've got a better feel for the upper limit and the lower limit so if i'd never gone through manic feelings then i would still be just flying very close to the water feeling weighed down feeling not like myself but because i've experienced the upper end across the line uh, even though it's a painful experience it's better to have that awareness that something that there's a felt experience of life that is much better than flying right above the water. There's an in-between which feels so much more better than life on the lower limit or life at the upper limit. There's a, an in-between. So that's it. Thanks again for listening. And I will speak to you on the next episode.